So we all know Devon, the AI agent specializing in software development and specifically contributing to successfully maintain, update, and change code in large, complex code bases. And it's been like a while since we heard anything about it. Specifically, it was the last March that we heard that about anything about Devon. And the latest benchmarks we saw from Devon were that Devon was leading compared to every single other LLM by 13% on the SWE benchmark or the software engineering benchmark, which basically like takes real world GitHub issues on real world repositories and tries to solve them using AI or large language models, agents in large language models, and see how well it does compared to those. And is it like successfully being able to solve those like a real engineer or not? And now a couple months later, the same benchmark, the SWE benchmark, it has got a brand new model using open hands in the code act v2.1 using cloud 3.5 sonnet and it has resolved quite literally 53% of the benchmark like 53% we went from 13% devon last march to 53% in a couple of months well i mean i wouldn't call it in a couple of months but more of like a year but actually seeing the improvement from 13% to be able to solve like now more than half all of the available GitHub issues successfully all by an AI agent, no help from like a third party developer, nothing like that. Just give it a GitHub issue, it tries to go through like the issue itself, understands the issue, what's happening, reads the code base, initialize the code base, run tests by itself, literally does like everything from literally everything like what a software engineer would do. If you imagine yourself as a software engineer trying to debug this or solve the issue, you would basically like go ahead and clone the repository, install the dependencies, start the projects, reproduce the issue just to see exactly what is causing the issue, debug it of course, and solve the issue. And that's exactly what the AI engine does. And now it's actually way much better than us. I mean, what would happen in 2025? That's like what is super scary to me. And I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys are wondering. And what is happening with Devon? Because last time we've heard from Devon was on March 15, and Devon was 13% already, like ahead of everybody else. We haven't heard from the Devon team or the Cognition AI team just yet, but I'm assuming there is a huge improvement already. So what is this benchmark? What is this SWE benchmark? It's a set of like GitHub repositories, mainly Python GitHub repositories, very well known repositories that were collected by the SWE benchmark team and like analyzed and verified against like the specific issues that provided and created like a data set for, you know, training or testing or validating the different language models. And all of those have been like different language models that were like did run or get validated through the SWE bench kind of like benchmark. And of course, there's a bunch of stuff in here. For example, you see Rack plus Cloud 3 Opus or Cloud 2. They were doing like 4%, 0.40% in here, GPT 3.5 plus RAG. And going all of here from like um, Amazon Q developer agent to Honeycomb to Solver, uh, Emergence E1, a bunch of them to recently in here, Open Hands, which uses behind the scenes the Cloud 3.5 Sonnet that was able to duck solve all of those. And this was just like most recent one, 2024 or the 29th of October, like just a month ago from now. And um, yeah, I mean, everything looks pretty good from here. And if you just go in and click on the website in here, Open Hands is actually really good. Um, they have like their own website. It's like an AI agent as well. It's the leading one in here. You can go in and like run it locally. It runs on your machine, on your browser more specifically. And it allows you to do something like this. That's basically like a video for it. So, you know, you give it a what you want with a code base or something. You want to create something. And the AI agents, like any other AI agents, or this is like the optimal one now, uh, it's going to go ahead and do like everything for you. Run scripts, um, you know, write code, write or design landing pages for you if you want pretty much everything that you would ask it to in a very, very nice way. Uh, I'm not a big fan of their interface. Hope they kind of like improve that because I was trying it. It's not really perfect, but it actually works really, really well. Now, behind the scenes, it uses this SWE agent, which is like 
the main engine that powers open hand open hand is like the framework this is like the single agent implementation so technically speaking you can take this agent the swe agents in here you give it a github issue and it goes ahead clones the repository does all the necessary steps in order to debug the issue solve the issue test if the issue is was fixed on the original repository or not and create a pull request yes an actual pull request for you on the target repository and says, oh, there you go. We've got a pull request fix for you. You can go in and validate it for yourself if you want, but it does all of that just by providing it a GitHub issue, which is absolutely mind blowing. So this is what the SWE agent app looks like. Once you go ahead and set it up, it's very easy to set up, just install the start to start the actual like application in here on localhost 3000. So this is the interface, it's pretty simple. Here you give it the GitHub is issue in here. Um, you can go in and select like a problem source, like the, if you want a local file or right here, like if you wanna actually write the problem and you give it the repository and it does for you. But the most interesting part of course is actually giving it or handing in a GitHub issue you are on here and it does the job. So I already did give it a GitHub issue in here. So the issue is like this on the log roo, uh, hopefully I'm spelling this right, but it's like a login sort of uh, tool for Python, which makes login make made easy, stupidly simple. Uh, it's it's really good in here. I absolutely love this one. So what I try to go ahead and do is actually go to the issues in here, figure out one of the issues that were solved most recently. And of course, I wanted the issue to be like simple enough in here so we could validate ourselves in here and not spend hours just debugging what's going on. And of course, we need to make sure the issue has already been fixed by a PR. So this issue has been fixed by a PR. This is the PR for the issue that fixed the issue pretty much. And um, yeah, you can like, of course, for the PR in here, what we wanted is to check what were the changes. So we could like compare them with what the, you know, the agent, the AI agent did just to make sure that the agent is not like fooling us and it's actually like solving the issues for us or the GitHub issue for us. So uh, yeah, so look, I went ahead in here, as I said before, I gave it the issue, I did click run, and I actually just started running from environment initialization in here to like, you know, understanding exactly what's going on. So it's like, oh, let's start by examining the contents of the current directory to get an idea of the repository structure. It tried to look into the different files that the repository has. Of course, it did clone the repository beforehand. Um, it's just in here, just going inside of like SRC logo, better exceptions. It tries to like analyze what's going on. And of course, in here, like investigate the issue. We need to locate the better exception.py file mentioned in the bug report. Let's search for it. So let me double check. Is it like the actual file that were mentioned in the issue? So uh, this could print. Yeah, there you go. So I found that in the file better exception.py on line 500, there's this issue in here that removes variable state. So it looks like it's actually following the right trajectory and it's like going through the right path. So uh, now that we've found a file, let's open it and navigate to line 500 where the issue is reported to be. Okay, this is nice. Uh, this is a lot of gibberish. This looks like, I mean, I wish if they could um, improve the formatting, but for now we could just go and run. The issue seems to be that the traceback format list dot frames call on line 500 is removing the variable state. To fix this, we need to modify the format frames method to preserve the variable state when self diagnosis is true. Let's modify the method to include variable state in the format output when self diagnosis is true. So it looks like it tries to modify um, the format method to preserve variables. Okay, so format frames. Let me just go ahead and take a look. I'm just gonna go in and search for this. Well, I mean, this doesn't look like it does exist in here. Um, but if I, I think if I use this, this is actually like another um, sort of like a web UI that allows you to follow the specific trajectory of like a specific run. For example, this is the run for the Logaru is in Cloud 3.5 Sonnet. It just like gives you you know, like the whole logs of the evaluation report, the system report, demonstration and stuff. But we care about the SW agents in here. So this is basically like what it did. Uh, and it kind of like, it tried to trace this, like trace the issue back to, so the issue seems to be that the trace back to format list called line 500 is removing the variable state. To fix this, we need to modify the format frames method to preserve the variables state in the formatted output when self-diagnose is true. So it kind of like 
tries or it did figure out what's the issue for us so that's good now this is the edit this is the like potential edit or fix sort of like patch that it did to fix it which uh it looks like it is um it's like going inside of this format frames function or method and if i look into the actual pr i mean it, it doesn't necessarily have to be like the exact same code because of course like if i were to fix this or put in a pr fix for this i would have like maybe thought of a different solution that is completely valid and it works but with different kind of like way of thinking or maybe uh you know there's different ways to fix something or to implement something there's always different ways so it's not always ideal to just go in and like compare code uh side by side because of course they're not going to be like exactly the same thing and i'm not sure if this is going to fix it or not because i'm not really um a lot of familiar with so much of like python stuff in here but apparently if we just like keep uh going through in here so after he made those fixes and he made all the necessary edits it says like oh file updated please review the changes and make sure they're correct correct indentation no duplicate lines edc and um yeah so here it tells you oh open up the file the current directory is delgo oh delegan logaru and it says that the changes look good now let's create a test script to verify the diagnose flag is working correctly so it looks like it tries to go and create a test script starting from the issue like the problem we saw before and the reproduction scripts they already created so it created this uh test script which is like this import logger um, from a logger input logger and it has used to add a diagnose equals true and um it tries to define this test function Ints, it tries a divided by b then log the exception test completed checks test life for results um okay tracing this uh test completed check test off for results file data please read the changes and make sure they're correct correct indentation so the test script looks good now let's run it to see if the diagnosis flag is working correctly now it is actually running using python test diagnose it runs the test script that we've just created or it just created and it says test completed check test log for results the test has run successfully now let's check the concept test log to see if there's a variable and it even goes inside of the test.log to see if it's actually as expected which division by zero it gets like the zero division by zero great the test log shows that the variable state is now preserved in the trace bag when the diagnose flag is set to true the issue has been resolved let's clean up by removing the test file so it cleans up the files and there you go You've got your edits and it says, oh, no, that we fixed fix the issue and verify the solution. We can submit our changes. And this is actually like the submit step where it creates or submits a PR. You can handle this differently. But the most important part, it did all this by itself. Like the way of thinking, as you saw, like the logs, it's really fascinating. It feels like, you know, like an actual human engineer is thinking behind the scenes and doing the different, um, you know, logical tests and creating a test file and running it and seeing the logs. It's doing all of that by itself, like completely by itself. And that's why this one is literally solving like 53% of the SWE benchmark, which is amazing. I absolutely love it. And it's also frightening of what comes next in the future from all of that. So I'm really excited about this. I would love to test this more with better user interface because I'm not a big fan of this one. But the most important part, this is actually fascinating. I'm, I'm mind blown. Absolutely. Oh yeah, and if you want to check exactly what the SWE benchmark looks like or what are the exact repositories that this did run on. So for example, I'm using the Verify split, the most recent one, 29th of October, Open Hands and Code X, which is the one that got 53% out of like 500 GitHub issues. Uh, is amazing, of course, but um, if you look into the stats or the analysis in here, those are different, like all the repositories are using inside of the benchmark. The AstroPy, I'm not sure which one is this, but Django is, we all know Django. We all have used Django. It's it's really well known um, server framework that powers big companies, like billions of dollars of companies. And this one like has total 231 issues open and the benchmark or the open hands were able like to fix 128 absolutely 128 out of 238 that is fascinating more than a half of that um the astropy as well the matplotlib it got 34 and it fixed 17 
Um, there is Flask, another sort of like web server kind of framework. Uh, it has two and it's like fixed nothing or, oh, no, sorry. Oh, it has one and it fixed it quite literally. And uh, there is the request library it has any fix for X array, pi lane to pi test in here. It's literally doing a lot of fascinating job. Uh, but nonetheless, this one is absolutely fascinating. So I would love or I would actually advise you guys to go in and keep an eye on this SWE bench, swebench.com. And you can check it out now and then to know what is the state of the art sort of model and where we are at. And is it actually time to look for a different um, career maybe in farming or something where AI is uh, away from us? But anyway, guys, hopefully see you guys hopefully in the next video. And uh, yeah. All right. See ya.